our president. I think we're going to do very well. Nothing beyond our The capacity. U.S. 2024 campaign season is in full swing. And that means lots and lots of fundraisers. It's kind of like an arms race. If, if one side is on all the time, you've got to be on all the time. The spending isn't influencing voters as much. It's, it's to say my campaign is as strong as the, my opponent's. And spending keeps going up. Thank you. Five days. You Thank you. The 2008 campaign shattered spending records at $5.3 billion. Be your president. Go vote. Remember, folks. In 2012 and 2016, campaigns spent more than $6 billion. And by 2020, that number rose to more than $14 billion. Foster says the rise in campaign spending comes down to two important factors. A lot of increase in grassroots, small dollar um, donations, but also the fact that we're seeing a transition from traditional campaign committees raising money to relying on independent expenditures, the super PAC. Super PACs are groups, including corporations and labor unions, that can raise and spend unlimited amounts of money for a campaign thanks to a 2010 Supreme Court ruling known as Citizens United. The one stipulation? They cannot coordinate directly with the candidates. Critics say the ruling is terrible for democracy. But Michael Cohen, author of the book Modern Political Campaigns, takes an optimistic view. If you're wondering whether or not the United States um, buys its elections, um, I would say to you that it's been less now than it's ever been in my lifetime. And the reason why is because of the spike in individual contributors and also the reporting um, is very transparent now. We all know where a lot of this money is coming from or, or at least going to. So even with super PACs where you don't know who's giving money to them, you have a sense because the reporting is actually very good. So where is the bulk of that money going? From account. These networks, they, they anticipate this. This is their Super Bowl. This is like, they're like, I mean, it, it's bigger than Super Bowl for them because they know like they can charge so much money. That's not the case in other democracies around the world. We tend to spend so much more money than a lot of other um, countries around the world because we have fewer rules on when you can campaign and how much you can raise. For example, in Canada, federal elections may only last 36 to 50 days, and there's a cap on how much a political party can spend. In Germany, local and state laws ban TV ads from airing until one month before the election. But one country may prove to have an even pricier election than the US this year, India, which voted last May was projected to spend almost 1.35 trillion rupees, or $16.1 billion, according to the New Delhi Center for Media Studies. It's unclear if U.S. campaign spending will top its 2020 numbers. But the campaigns know any money that they do not manage to spend before November cannot go into a politician's personal bank account. You used to be able to roll that money over or take it with you um, to go build a house for yourself or go spend money on your own. Post Watergate rules are that you cannot use it for your own personal interests, but you can keep it for future campaigns. Or importantly, if you decide that you're not gonna run, you can give it to other political action committees or you can give it to political parties. Or if you wanted to, and some people do this, they even refund some of that money or they go ahead and they um, give it to charity. With the election more than a few months away, President Joe Biden and the presumptive Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump have plenty of time to raise and spend a lot of money.